What's good, everybody? Welcome back to the OG Sports Show. It's your boy Chuck. Slow motion. And B. Reporting live from South Tampa, SBM Studios. How's everybody doing? What's good, fellas? What's no, up? Good, nothing. Good, Happy birthday yesterday. Celebrate. Yeah, Happy birthday. related birthday thank to you, my partner. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. 43 years yeah, old. Man, I shouldn't even put your business out there like I, that. Though. I don't care. It's all good. I they put it the, out there. They see the grades. They see the grades. Yeah. <laughs> it don't even matter, though. I don't even care. I'm 43 and proud. Hey, man, you should Word. be because a lot of us don't make it that far. Don't make it. Got it. Yeah, hey, so. man. It's a blessing to wake up every day. Grand risings, as uh, oh, my boy Sway said every start morning. That shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> start that grand next day, you know you're gonna start calling me king all the time. Hey, so. I might. Dog. No, don't do that. I do that. You know, some people have they, you know, they 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 little birthday shout outs to their kids. On if it's a, if it's a if it's a boy, I say happy birthday, young, young king. king. If it's yeah. a, that's if different. It, if that's it's different. a girl, happy birthday, young queen. That's different. That's different. You're a grown ass man. Don't call me king. Hey man, but you raising some kings and a queen. You right. You know what I'm saying. Exactly. You right. I'm okay. raising two kings. My boy got Mighty two kings and a queen. <laughs> <laughs> Matter of fact, y'all seen move? I saw I it. I saw uh, it. You ain't I, it. I watched it Saturday. It was pretty good. Everybody, a lot of people was disappointed. I was pretty. I was a lot of people hate. They was expecting it to be. It's not the classic be like that. the first one. No. It was. It's not going to be. It was exactly what I thought it would be. Right. So I was just I was, enjoyed the movie. It I was, was good. It was fun. It. I was all right with me. It was real nostalgic for me to be able yeah. to see all the. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. We're not gonna get. We, we're not gonna get into it because you ain't seen yeah. it yet. But it, I mean, I you go. If you if you go in with no expectations. No, you'd be, I don't. You'd be, I don't. I you'd knew, be great. I knew. You'd be I said I'm not going to go in. It's here. impossible to top the first one. Right. You right. can't. Impossible. You, you can't. couldn't even match the first That's one. That's just like the first Friday. Right. You, All of you them. can't. Be happy with what you got. Yeah. The second was one's cool. The third Friday was great. But the it ain't going to top that first alone. one. Never. Never. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Well, let's get into it, man. What the lick read, bro? What the lick read? We in week 10. We in 10 weeks. Man, man. We're moving along. 10 weeks. 10 weeks. All right, what we want to start at? Let's start at uh, what's going on right now and currently the business of the NFL. Yeah, money. cats getting paid, money time, money um, time. Yeah. Cats getting released, released. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's what you know. We're gonna focus on specific contracts, but let's talk about the business of the NFL that a lot of people really don't understand. The average fan don't understand the business of the NFL, how it works. Why their favorite player is released, right. or why they're not signed? Um, you know, a lot of Dallas Cowboy fans out there, and it's so funny how Cowboy fans are. They were like, uh, "That should just go," uh, you know. <laughs> he does, he don't deserve that money. And then as soon as he get the contract, man, Thank I you. told you we back. We go <laughs> like, wait a minute, y'all was just shitting on the man, it, but they didn't understand, and and I'm. I'm Glad for that. I hate the Cowboys. Yeah, be known. I hate the Cowboys, but I'm glad the man got his money. Me too. Uh, he he bet on himself. Yes, he did. He waited. He did not take what they were trying to offer. Yeah, did not. And he got his bread. Yeah. And a lot of people don't understand why he didn't take the even though on in our terms. The thirty million dollars, the thirty-five million dollars, a lot of bread for us. Right. Hello. But the market value for a premier starting quarterback was it's forty million. Forty million. Yeah. Mahomes and Deshaun set the tone. Right. He cannot take under the market value. No. He hurts it for other people. He will, he would hurt for Lamar Jackson and and Josh <clears throat> and your boy and, and Buffalo. Right, Josh yeah. Allen. That's what the standard is. When people don't understand, well, well, I don't see why he didn't take that money. You know, he's not supposed to take that. He's money. not supposed to take that because that contract is going to be irrelevant. Exactly. When we talking about Lamar and the mother boys come up to sign their contract, that forty million ain't going to be shit. Right. No, because there, there's like they're going to break the bank for Josh Allen. Yes. They Buffalo will break the bank for him. They might try to dick Lamar over. Pro- possibly. Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. It's possible. But he's still going to get paid because they they're not going to let him go. He should. Yeah. He and should, he should do. The same thing as that. Do not yeah. settle. Do not give these people 
a hometown discount. And remember, we was all together when he broke his ankle. Right. Like, I was right. I was devastated for that. That was yeah. Because I felt like I felt like he should have held the Cowboys a little bit more hostage, um, and not signed the franchise tag. But I'm glad he did because he got it was guaranteed bread that he got. Right. right. So if you if you combine that with what he's gonna get, with, I think he's gonna get 75 million the first yes. year. 126 this million guaranteed. of the 130 guaranteed. Yeah. 140 guaranteed. You, know, bro, just imagine. Like I told, I tell my oldest son who has aspirations to make some money one day. Mm -hmm. He always has these grand schemes of what he's gonna do. But I told him, like, bro, can you just imagine just signing your name to a piece of paper? And a few days later, sixty-six million dollars is deposited in your account. <laughs> I'm definitely like I saw, myself. Like I saw the picture of him hugging his brother. I'd be hugging everybody and crying. I don't know if I could stop the crying. Yeah. Nah. Because you think about it, he just got what thirty something 30, million. Thirty one million was it was guaranteed the year sure before. For the, he for he the, took care of that. Yeah, but just now, you know, the, now the, you're getting sixty six. You'd be so tempted to say that thirty one million. Can we just set it on fire real quick? Right. Let's burn it, bro. Because I'm getting sixty six is coming, and you know, it'll, it'll finish out the season. Right. We're gonna turn that sixty six to seventy five. Right. And he and, and it, it start it makes it for him to have generational. Well, which a lot of us we don't understand. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, and for, I'm I'm extremely happy for that young brother because of the fact that he mm -hmm. lost his mother right yeah. not long ago, and then lost his old, his old, older brother who, right. his, who who took his own life. For it to be him and his 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 older brother that's just left, and to know that they ain't gonna have to worry about nothing for the rest of their life. Right, their kids, their kids don't have to worry about nothing for their the rest grandkids of their life. Grandkids ain't have to worry. About I can only imagine how good that feels you know what i'm saying it's got to be awesome feeling and, you know what i'm saying and you got to think like how hard he had to work as a fourth round pick to get to that point to right. get to the point where and he, just go if you even go beyond that you think about like i'm sure if all of us is in that opportunity uh, is in that situation you think about being six years old and going out there and running your butt off as a six-year-old playing football and then you think about middle school years think about high school years all the grinding you did Especially him being a black quarterback, all the grinding he had to do to get himself to this point, and the second guessing he probably had, right? And the opportunities that other, I'm sure, college coaches didn't want to give him because he was a black quarterback. Oh, you can probably play linebacker, or a tight end, or something right. like that. And to get to that point, the way you know you ain't got to worry about nothing for the rest of your life, that's awesome feeling. Man. But Dallas made the mistake, and this is where we talk about the business of the NFL. And you pointed out he was a what third, fourth round pick? Fourth round pick. Yeah. Making five, six hundred thousand a year. He came in his rookie year, they went thirteen and three, won the division. Okay. That's when you say, Dak, let me rip this up. And you could have gave him twenty to twenty five million at that point. Yeah. Yeah. You could have gave him that. But you no, you what you made him play all the way out, and then you you didn't trust him and you said you franchised him. So he gets the thirty five million dollar ticket. And then now you got to pay him this. Whew. And he got him. I mean, he 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 took them to the woodshed, as they say, uh, to get that bread. And I'm 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 happy for him. Like I said, because I was nervous. Like I said, when he broke his ankle, I was thinking, man, he Jerry, gonna, he's gonna get screwed. Gonna him, Jerry gonna mess him over. Yeah, everybody was scared of him. But you know, he got his money. Like I said, we happy for him, man. I'm glad he was able to get paid for sure. And a lot of people don't realize, like. <clears throat> Yeah, football is one of those sports where your money is when you is your is in your guarantee. Right. Whatever your guarantee money is, you're gonna get that. Right. That's part of the contract. You the rest get, of it is a toss up. The rest of it is a toss up. Yeah. And whatever you hit for incentives, they gotta give you that because that's in the contract. Yeah. But as those contracts get older, and those years, you know, you get deep into those contracts. You know, you sign a four year deal. You get into year three and year four, they can cut you. And then owe you and nothing. And don't owe you nothing. Yeah. <clears throat> Which happens a lot. Which happens a lot, and that's part of the business the of the, business of the, the NFL. NFL. They yeah. don't. They don't have the. Uh, they're not the NBA or the or, the, or Major League Baseball. Or Major League Baseball. No, you have to get top dollar in your market value when you can. When in the you NFL. can get it, you got to get when it. You, yeah. you got to get it, and and sometimes <clears throat> I can't believe you go sign with the Bengals. Well, <laughs> yeah, I may not win. <laughs> But, but they're gonna, they gonna cut the check. Cut the check. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So now it's up to you to do something with it. You know. Right. But it happens all the time in the NFL. Fans look at the game from the owner's 
point of view. Oh, this guy's being greedy. This is no. Right. And even you think of somebody like take Shaq Barrett for the Bucks, right? Right. This man came into the league and sat behind Von Miller. Then they draft Bradley Chubb. So now he has to go out and bet on himself. Right. Bets on himself sound like a, the first deal with the Bucks was like a three million dollar deal for one year. Mm -hmm. Balls out, Pro Bowl, All Pro, right? Yeah. So then they the what, Bucks, 19 sacks. Yeah, Bucks of course tagging him. Can you do it again? That's guaranteed money. He goes out, didn't have as big a year, but he was a big contributor to a Super Bowl. You winning know how team. valuable he is. You know about right. That's what so he got eighteen last year. Sixteen. I think it was like fifteen. Because he he enabled JPP to be a Pro Bowler right. exactly. this year. So now, that's one of the people on coming off Super Bowl teams. You you usually see guys go for their money at this point. I wouldn't be surprised if Shaq Barry, somebody offers him money, he can't he pass leaves. up. Yeah. And, yeah. He, and he has to go. And he should. And he should. He should. Because he put in his time. He 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 was on his um his his his. his Franchise tags, right. and it's time for them to get paid. Okay. And you got to think about it, man. These cats, they literally put their lives on the line every season. You know, we all play football. We all suffering from being broke up for the, the little bit of time that we played. Imagine if we were still, if we played through our 20s and 30s. At that level. Just how bad our bodies would be in shape from playing for that long. Yeah. You got to be able to, 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 to if you're going to put in that kind of risk, you got to be able to take care of yourself and your family based on what you're putting out there. And that's the so, sacrifice that they make. Like, that's one of the things you know. I, I'm Some stuff is I'm going to cause some damage to my body. Right. But I got this opportunity to set my my family and my, my kids and my kids' kids up if I can do it right. And right. not if you do it right. If you 10 years in the NFL. Right. You a backup you player. Can, you, can, you can skate by and make a lot of breaks. You get 10 years in and you're not really a high-profile player. Right. But you... You played and you know you played ten years. Obviously, you good enough to what teams get, teams keep putting you on. Right, get that pension. Get that pension. 10. You know what I'm saying? And if you were smart with your money, you saved up your money. Right, you good. You set for life. NFL pensions about three to four hundred thousand a year. Who can't live right. off of that? Oh man, if you can't, then you're doing something wrong. You're doing something wrong. Right. And, yeah, and so. speaking of like what you were saying about Shaq Bear, I think. Levante David cheated himself out of money by signing that deal with the Bucks. Yeah. I, I think he just wanted to stay comfortable, but he did the Derrick Brooks. Yeah. If he would have hit the market, he would have got more than what he just signed for. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. I, I think, you know, they called him the contract extension um, because it basically is. I think he had one more year left on his deal, one or two more years left on the deal. So, he, you know, at, at that point, you, you think about it. Cause he signed a big contract too, like after his rookie contract, he signed right. a big contract too. So at this point, probably for for Levante, it's I want a Super Bowl, I want to do it again. Right. I've been here long enough. I'm you know going into my early. And 30s, the money is good. And the money's good. I've already made 40, 50 million already yeah. on this on the first big contract. Yeah. You know, can I? He, he him and Shaq Barrett are in two different situations. Right. Back, Shaq Barrett has not had that big contract. Yeah. Right. If they want to stay, they're gonna have to take team friendly deals. Right. And yeah. To me. I'm not taking a team friendly deal because especially at their age, they gotta bet on themselves, like we said. Right. They gotta take a deal that's gonna take care of them and their family for for the rest of their lives. They can't take a team friendly deal. I understand you wanna continue to win, but hey, I already got a ring. I've already been in the Pro Bowl. I gotta take care of my family. And that's what Devontae did because Devontae is not that marketable player. He's a great football player, but he don't have any commercials. He don't have any endorsements. No. He's he's making his money on, on the, the field. field. Yeah, you know, so I, 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 I understand why he did what he did, but I still think I want to test that market and see. He's gonna get selfish there. now. Like now's the time to get selfish. Well, it's too late now. And it's too late now. He's deal, not gonna yeah. he's not gonna get the same kind of deal. You know what I'm saying? He would have gotten before. Right. But for, especially for Shaq Barrett, Shaq Barrett's gotta be selfish. Yeah. He gotta be like, you look, if I got to go to Jacksonville, and we go. You know, six and ten for the next four years. So be it. I need to get this check. You know Jacksonville saying? might not be that bad of a spot because they, they got might a not. ton of money to spend. It's still Florida, even though it's in shitty Jacksonville. Sorry, and they're gonna, and they gonna get Jacksonville. They're they gonna get the Golden Boy. <laughs> so city is you know, shitty. who knows? Yeah. They may be looking up. Who knows? We'll see. Yeah. Cool. All right. Coach got exposed in recruiting. We all know things got. <laughs> We all know recruiting, how dirty the business is of yeah. college recruiting. Yeah. My boy, Les Miles. Les Miles said, I don't want no fat 
ugly chicks working in the sporting <sighs> office when these recruits coming through here when it was at LSU. Nothing but tenderonies. Tenderonies blonde with big boobies. That's what I want. <laughs> I almost choked. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I and it's a shame that it's coming out now. But and he lost his job at Kansas and, and the A D at Kansas lost his job today. Well I mean, did he lose his job or did they just find a reason to get rid of him? It was 0 and nine last Yeah, year. I mean they just found a reason to get rid of him. Yeah, Les Miles, you can't recruit uh the talented kids out of Florida, Georgia, Louisiana the to big, come to Kansas. The big the deal is what L S U did to cover it all up. Yeah. Why See, is it just not coming they out? They made now? it a less miles issue. See, you, you, this, that's how universities do. Mm. It wasn't us. It wasn't an organization thing. It was that guy. It was that guy. Because I, I can swear to you, we have ugly fat chicks now. In our office. <laughs> if not, we just hired them yesterday. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I think if he wasn't doing anything different. Let me, let me paraphrase. Part of what he was doing was not different than no other school no. does. It's an ugly business. Right. He, his mistake was he didn't want just the recruits to have fun. He wanted to have a little fun. Too. Yeah, and that, that's where he gets That's where trouble. he messed up. Right, right. He wanted to, to taste the pudding, too. Right. Taste the pudding. He wanted to taste the pudding. <laughs> but when you look at it, though, these coaches are, get paid and hired to win. Yeah. And... Nobody cares when you win it. Because like I said, when LSU, when he was at LSU, why did this story come out now? He's been gone from LSU. He's winning. He won the national title. They were winning. How long he's been gone from LSU? Shoot, good. Ten years. Four, five years. Long at least. And the story's just coming out. Yeah. But when you winning, nobody cares. Nobody cares that uh, what was going on in Florida under Urban Meyer. At all. No. Them cats was out of control. Now you're looking at it. <laughs> yeah. Did y'all also, did y'all see the, um, it was a video that, that, that somebody put out on YouTube, I think, about um, the dude was kind of ex- trying to expose uh, Kirby Smart. No. Yeah, I, I seen the story. Did you see it? What happened? You remember that show we used to, uh, on MTV called Two A Days? Right. The coach, Rush Propes. Yeah, the one that was, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, he's coaching at a, you know, a, in a Georgia, county school in South Georgia right. now. Well, they apparently- ran him out from cheating on his wife. Well, yeah, he cheated on his wife with another teacher at the school <laughs> and now they had a whole new family together and he left his wife and he's living a whole different life but anyway <laughs> apparently he was talking to a uh, associate of his and um the dude recorded it and put it on youtube basically he was saying that kirby has you know all every multi-millionaire in southwest georgia kind of in his pocket and you know they spend you know tens of thousands of dollars right. on recruits every right. year, and that's how Kirby's able to get all these cats to come to Georgia, which we all know that wasn't no right. big surprise. But the fact that he tried to put it, you know, he basically out, his intent wasn't to obviously wasn't to expose Kirby, you know, nationally, but the, whoever the dude was recording it was right, right. So, you know, I, I mean, I wasn't shocked because Kirby does get a lot of the top recruits in the country. Yeah, Georgia's top, top five, top ten, usually every year. every year. But he does nothing with them. Like they, they can't get over the hump. But, right. You know, they can't get past Alabama. They barely get past Florida. They was doing um, better when they had Mark Rick and Red yeah. Rick to buy there. They was literally doing the same. I think somebody looked it up and saw that the basically Rick's uh, winning Mark percentage Rick, is the same as is Kirby's. And uh, Rick was going to the championship game. And then Rick yeah. was losing to Florida. Right. Kirby has beat Florida. Yeah, but Kirby can't beat Alabama. No, well, nobody can. Right, but <laughs> you know, and 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 you know, it's no big surprise. You know, what I'm saying what they doing. If, if Kirby's got people lining cats' pockets, I mean, everybody does everybody it to a certain does. degree. You think Alabama, with Nick Saban have his own Mercedes Benz parking lot? You think the half the team ain't driving Benzes right now? Yes. You know, what I'm saying that I'm, everybody's getting taken care of right. to a certain degree. Right. So. Yeah, talked about Tennessee a couple weeks ago. Giving recruits money in McDonald's the bag. The McDonald's bag. You can put it in a Wendy's bag, McDonald's bag. It don't even matter. Whataburger, I don't know if they got them in Tennessee or not, but <laughs> the checkers bag, it wouldn't be. <laughs> but that's, I mean, you get, you, you remember the scandal in Louisville with Rick Pitino. Yeah. Um, Rick, Rick Pitino had the strippers. And, strippers. Yeah. You know, uh, hey, yeah, but Having orgies. Yeah. <laughs> and the kids still didn't come back. <laughs> 
I'm so, going to go to a party. Everybody's in there. I got somebody to get you. You you, you want some? We got to take care of you. Everybody can get taken care of. Yeah, but everybody knows that every school, they, no anytime, they have a, anytime they have a recruit, they have the prettiest girl that they can yes. find or Miss Alabama or Miss so-and-so to come and show the kids around. And right. She introduced them to some other girls. It just It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's, like you said, these cats are paid millions of dollars to win ball games. They gotta At all find, cost. They got to find whatever advantage they can. And if a pretty girl going to get the best recruit to the school, it sucks for the pretty girl. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, I mean. But it's a shame. Like, I think we talked about it a couple shows ago. When old Miss is doing it, you still lose it. Yeah, man. You got at least got to <laughs> win if you're going to do it. At least. Or at least get caught. If you're going to be dumb enough to get caught. <laughs> yeah. You got to be winning. Because if you're not winning. It's a wrap for it's you. A wrap. Yeah. The hammer's about to come down. Yeah. I mean, look what was going on down in Miami in the Loop days. You know? Oh, man. Them cats was out of control. Yeah, but they was winning ball games. They was winning, they was winning ball games. It, none right. of it came out. And the great thing, thing about that was, <laughs> like, they didn't really have to leave South Florida to, to win. No. Like, the only cats was from home. From, from the only ones that they got from outside was, let me see. Um, Shocky. Shockey came from out of town. Testa Verde. Uh, Testa Verde. Uh, Vilma was from Louisiana. Yeah. Yeah. So was um um Ed Reed. Ed Reed from New uh, Orleans. What's the other linebacker was from no, Dallas. Was Texas, no, he's from New Orleans. Okay. Michael Barrow. Michael Barrow was no no no. What's the cat? Um, Armstead. Armstead was yeah. from Texas. Yeah. Because he went to Dallas Carter. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, for the most part, they were know, the Alabama, like Florida State was. Yeah, all them running backs, McGahee and, and Portis and, and Edge, all them cats from South Florida. Yeah. Michael Irvin, South Florida. You know what I'm saying? So. That's what was so crazy about them. They ain't had to leave home. Like they was, Mike Irvin said, we were bigger than the Dolphins. We was in the club. They were. The Dolphins were standing in line. <laughs> they were like, yo, excuse me. <laughs> Mike Irvin, dude, and got it. <laughs> yeah, man. Them was the good old days, though. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, that's just, I mean, it, just, it is what it is. I you guess, know what I'm saying? I guess schools got to find that balance of being able to keep pace with paying recruits or giving benefits to them guys and winning and not getting caught. It's, right. It's a it's a it's a fine not it's a fine line. It's a it's a fine walk you have to do to kind of balance all of those things. Yeah. <clears throat> and still be competitive and still be good. Be good, yeah. It's a billion dollar business. And yeah. ain't no way schools, you can tell me these schools ain't paying nobody. Even right. little schools giving something. Right. Yeah. They have to. Well they you remember to. when uh Shiano was at Rutgers when he had Rutgers real good mm -hmm. before he came down here and shitted up the Bucks. <laughs> but right. He had Ruck he put Rutgers on the map. Yeah. But the academics, because Rutgers is a real it's a tough school to tough get school. Into. Yeah. They were upset that these kids were coming there because yeah, you got a different brand of kids coming to Rutgers now. Yeah. You yeah. got Raheem and them coming. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> they got to they gotta, they gotta squeeze and bend the rules a little bit right. so they can get admitted, you know what I'm saying, so they can win some ball games. And they didn't like it, but Shiano Sh said, hey, you like mm -hmm. them new computers, right? And they're not the first school to do it. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Plenty of schools make, make, you know what I'm saying, they make exceptions for athletes to be able to get into the school. And then they because they want them to get an education. They can yeah. care less. It's like Notre Dame talks all that shit about, oh, we, I, they, you got to come in and compete, man. You still going out there making some kind of exception for right. one of these athletes? Yeah, you're not telling me that all these kids are qualifying. You know, the so only they, school that does that, and you up. see, the reason why they do it is Vanderbilt. Yeah, Vanderbilt yeah. City, they stand, but why? Why are they the bottom of the SEC? Vanderbilt and Stanford, they yeah. will. But Vanderbilt, but Stanford is still they. They'll have a team here and there. Vanderbilt ain't been shit since ever. I don't, Vanderbilt doesn't care that much about football. No, right. it's just the they. Sport. They more focused on baseball. Baseball, their baseball team is top yeah, five every good. year, and I, I'm sure they make some exceptions for their, some of their baseball players. I would imagine because if you know what the admissions was getting into right. Vanderbilt, it's ridiculous. Like your kids gotta have a three eight five, and and you know, they gotta have a thirteen hundred SAT. Like you're not gonna tell me that every one of those football players and basketball players and baseball players, it's all of them are qualifying at that level. It's kind of hard to believe. Yeah. Every school makes exceptions for athletes. Oh, you know what I'm saying? So they can win ball games. And that's the thing, like I was saying, with, we were saying about the HBCUs and stuff. It's It would be lovely for the HBCUs to come up and have five-star talent coming there. But, and like, Dion got some recruits in there now. But one, you know how these, this generation is. Yeah. Once them kids get there and they see their homeboys that they was recruiting at Alabama and all the driving cars and do, yeah. and you sit there, 
Alabama, got Jackson a, State. Alabama got a barbershop in the locker chicken room. Bar. So, yeah. They gonna be like, yo, yeah, I made a mistake. I just, I just, I just personally wish that we could get to the point to where HBCUs are just as um, appealing as some of these other schools are, and not just for the, for the, for the, for the lights and the, you know, glitz and the glamour, but just for the experience right. overall. You know what I'm saying? Because you can't really, it's kind of, it's unmatched. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You can't really match that experience that that, that you know, a young black man or a black woman would have at HBCU as opposed to at a PWI. So. You know, hopefully things will change. Like so I saw East, that, that Dion, they're going to get on ESPN2 this week. But see, that's the thing. Because Luke had tweeted something, mm -hmm. and I kind of retweeted what he said. He had a good point. He was like, because I was wondering that last Sunday when I'm looking, I was like, well, it's, they got spring football. Why is it on? Why is this trash on ESPN? Show the game. So I went to my app, and they, I could see the game from my ESPN, app. ESPN Plus. I right. Watched it on, yeah. So I was like. Why are these games are not on there? And and Dion's getting all the pub. Yeah. He if Dion wasn't there, they wouldn't even put that game on. No. He's gonna be on ESPN too though this week. So hopefully that maybe that who knows? Maybe that starts to trend. Who knows? I mean maybe they see if they get enough ratings, maybe they see, okay, we'll put an HBCU game on every week until the fall. Who knows? Yeah. Fingers crossed. We'll see what happens. All right. LeBron James. LeBron James being mom of if he's going to take the vaccine or not. And I ask you, fellas, is it an issue with you that he's not saying he's going to take it? What you think, B? <clears throat> that's his business. And if he don't want to take it, he don't want to take it. I'm pretty sure he's not one of those people that's – he's not. In, he's definitely not in the high-risk category, you know, as far as we know. Right. He, maybe he does have some pre-existing condition that we don't know about. Right. But as far as we know, one of the best athletes in the world. He said he don't want to take it. He, ain't, you know. Well, he didn't say he didn't want to take it. He, he just said, said he don't. He's not gonna. He says it's a it's a it's a family. It right. It's right. a personal family. thing. Yeah. That's that's a personal thing. I don't I don't have a problem with him saying that. And I don't know why anybody would be concerned with why he why he says this is an issue between me and my family. Because of the perception, everything is perception now, with, especially with the COVID thing. And some of it is, to me, is ridiculous. Like, I was watching a press conference with Ron Rivera today. Now, all the press conferences are now on Zoom. The reporters are not there. Right. right? Why are you sitting in that room with that mask on? Doing... <laughs> but it's the perception. Well, I understand I mean, why. He... Well, maybe there's other people in the room. No. Here's, here's, here's the thing. I think that... Um, when it comes to LeBron, I think they look for him to be a leader. A leader. They want him to be to lead by example. Right. So I think that the hope was that you know if LeBron takes the vaccine, that'll ease you know other people's apprehension about taking the vaccine. Obviously, every, everybody doesn't know why the the, the African American community is apprehensive about taking the vaccine, and you know, we just don't have a lot of trust in the government right. and what they do. Me personally. I was on that same stage. You know, I was like, I'm not taking it. I don't care what nobody says. I'm going to let everybody else take it. I'm not going to take it. That was my initial stance. But then Chris Rock said something that just made me think, like, like he makes a lot of sense. Chris Rock was like, I don't know what the hell is in Tylenol, but when I got a headache, I take one. Mm -hmm. He was like, I don't even know what's in the Popeye's chicken sandwich, but that some bitch is good. Mm -hmm. He's like, and we, we, we take so many other chances. Like, people are talking about, oh, they're going to put a microchip in you. Don't worry about that. You carry around a tracking device with Every you everywhere day. you go. Right, right. Like, so they already know what we're doing. What we... So so for me, I was just like, you know what? Chris Rock is right. Like, I don't, I don't know what's in Tyler now. I know it takes my headache away when I take one. So why not? To me, it's better than the alternative. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't want to have COVID. I don't want my parents to have COVID. I don't want right. my wife or my kids to have it. So I'd much rather just... Roll a dice. We roll a dice every day anyway. Yeah. So why not roll a dice and get it done? But I think with LeBron, they just want, they want him to be that spokesperson. The man ain't done enough. He opens a school. I mean, he's, it's never enough. he stands up for everything. You want him to stand up for this too? It's never That's that enough. man's business. Let him do what he want to do. Right. I, I'm, I'm with you. I, was, I, w I wasn't in the, <clears throat> the camp of I'm not taking it. I was in the camp of y'all go ahead and take it first. <laughs> <laughs> then once yeah, I see how, I was it, how kinks it, is worked once out, the kinks yeah. is worked out, <laughs> September, After your October, arm fall November, off. I'll be like, okay. <laughs> then they get it together, then I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and get it. Yeah. And then what changed my mind was, um, my pediatrician was like, I had we had an appointment last year with, with one of the kids, and she was like, by the time 
you'll be eligible to take it. She was like, you'll have first responders and medical medical personnel have already taken it. Mm -hmm. You've had, you know, people in high risk have already Pretty taken sure it. Pretty sure the military is already taken it. Military and all oh, that. Yeah. So by the time it comes around to you, it, they'll have enough data. And then also listening to, like, different radio shows and different articles and stuff. It's been in research for over a year. Yeah. You know, um, and then, too, when I see other people lining up the rich, white folks lining up to go get this vaccine, mm -hmm. and they, I when, want it too. Whenever I can take right. it, I'm going to take it. Whatever y'all got, I want to. So with LeBron, I can understand. That's that's his, like, I don't have a problem with him not being, being noncommittal on right. whether he's going to take it. It's not everybody's vaccine. business. It's not everybody's business. The normal people don't care, but right. it's like what you said. They want him to be the leader, and like I was saying too, it's the perception because they're going. They're probably thinking, if you're not saying you're taking it, you must be thinking something must be wrong with this right. thing. And then the, another young dude, because a lot of young dudes think that he's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Mm -hmm. Like you said, they don't want to take it. Right. So it's just the perception of it but he has the right to do it and i hope he stick to his guns yeah and i get it like i said a lot of folks in leadership would think man if lebron james just says he'll take it that'll get so many other people to get off the couch and say i'll take it too but that's that i mean that man how much burden you want that man to carry like he carries enough as it is you know what i'm saying so let that man do what he wants to do if he wants to get it which i'm sure he probably will he just don't want y'all in his business right we know who ain't taking it who that Kyrie. Wow. <laughs> He's definitely not taking it. <laughs> Last, he thinks it'll push him to the end of the earth or something. He'll fall <laughs> off. <laughs> Last subject for what the lick read. I just I want to throw this out there. Conversation between us young guys, young. older guy, older young. statement. All these grades. We, yeah, yeah, we young at heart. For sure. Just like generational disrespect for people that paved the way or before <clears throat> their generation. Um, and what triggered me was, and I'm pretty sure y'all all saw it because we all on the same Twitter feed line and we all kind of share the same followers and, and the poll on the greatest receiver within this century. No, not century. 21st century. 21st century. century. Yeah, I saw it. I didn't see this poll. <sighs> it was somebody put up a... Um, like a list before you even up. tell him okay just <laughs> name your top four receivers from 2000 basically 2000 on just right. say from your lifetime my lifetime jerry rice randy moss uh <clears> t.o <throat> just name four and then i'm gonna tell you what, where they were on this list they probably weren't on the list jerry rice t.o randy moss um <clears throat> Larry Fitzgerald. Larry Fitzgerald. Larry. Okay. Jerry Rice wasn't even on the list. Of course. <laughs> T.O. was eight. They had Moss eight. at one. Okay, Moss at one. All right. And I think Fitz was on there some kind. He was on there somewhere. <laughs> but but T.O. was eight. And and, and it's, it's the generation. When, when we were young, we still, we never saw Jim Brown play. No. But we respected Jim Brown for what he was. For sure. And everybody before of our visual that we actually could see them play. It's like we never seen Will Chamberlain play, but we right. know. When we had the argument the other day about uh, Bill, Russell. Bill Russell. But you still respected that. Right. These kids in this generation don't respect shit. But see, the thing of it is, that. I think it goes beyond sports. You know what I'm saying? I, I think that. You know what I'm saying? Our generation, like for me, I speak for myself. Um, anytime I, I'm I'm addressing an elder, it's yes, ma'am, yes, sir, black, white, it don't matter. Yes, ma'am, yes, sir, so on and so forth. I don't think these kids, I'm raising mine to do it, but I don't think, you know what I'm saying, the majority of the kids in the in, in this generation walk in with that type of respect. Um. And it's sad because I I think that things would be a lot better as a society if it was. Um, but I think it starts. I mean, it, like I said, it goes beyond sports. Like it's not just with sports where they don't have no regard or respect for what somebody did prior to the guys that they love today. Like 
you know, a lot of these kids think KD is the greatest thing they've ever seen on a basketball court. KD's good, but do you forget about the cats that came before? Right. Him? Like I said, like I, I told, I said last week about how my nephew told me that Larry Bird wasn't that talented. Yeah, talented. The craziest thing I ever heard in my life. Wow. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? I think, like I said, I, I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's just a, like you said, generation is just different. These kids think that. And I, like I said, I don't want to make a broad statement, but a lot of kids just, just they just don't, they're not that's not it's not ingrained into them from the beginning to respect someone who came before you. You know what I'm saying? But that's I, I think too that's <clears throat> every generation has that type of mentality to to some extent. So because um, there was we probably really so even when we put out like who was the best I've seen one time I put out like who was the best basketball player ever seen. Somebody put out Magic Johnson. We know Magic Johnson was good. My mom would probably tell you Dr. J is the best basketball player she's right. ever seen. Mm -hmm. Dr. J was good for his time. Right. Um, and you have to have some level of, I wouldn't say knowledge, but you have to be able to go back and look and see. Do your about, homework. Do your homework. Do your research about who came before. Um, listen to OGs when they're talking and telling you about people who played before then. And just go look and see. Because they swear everything started with them, right? In the in like 2010. Like, yeah. Well, like, yeah. Even, well, even like Kobe Bryant. Yeah. They'll say Kobe Bryant is the best player ever when when we know there would be no Kobe there, Bryant. There was no Michael Jordan. Right. He's a clone. Would be no no Kobe without Michael. Right. There'd be no Michael. All respect to Kobe's game. Right. It no... took me a while to really respect his game. <laughs> Man, I... But all respect to his it game. It didn't take me that long. Yeah. Five championships. But we all know it probably wouldn't be no MJ without Dr. J. Right, and right. And George Gervin and, right. and Oscar Robertson and mm -hmm. him seeing those guys come up. Mm -hmm. Right? So <clears throat> you have to be able to go back and see who came before you to understand. And I think it's too more of our our the generation before us, because it's not just our parents, but the generation before us kind of told us about this and showed us. Right. We didn't really, because these these kids, the generation previous to us, it's that's on us. Yeah. Yeah. Like them last week. them not knowing their history, sports history, and we can take it even a step further. Them not even knowing necessarily knowing their black history. That's on us. Well, these kids yeah. don't read. When when I was young, well, they I got, used to read. Well, that's because we didn't have access to a computer and a phone. That's yeah. true. You had to go to the library or we had to get right. a magazine or we had newspaper. To, or newspaper, right. right, and go through. And we didn't have every channel known to man. You had to watch regular TV right. yeah. and watch the evening news with your parents. and, and, the, and Walter Cronkite. You know, the, the NBC, the, 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 the Nation. 700 Club. Right. <laughs> Network news at at seven at mm -hmm. 7.30. You know, you had to... You had to kind of, that was the only way of getting information. Yeah. Because um, I had an encyclopedia. I had an encyclopedia. I had encyclopedias in my house. Well, you couldn't do a book report without an encyclopedia. Without an encyclopedia. <laughs> what? And even sometimes when I got bored, I would just pick a letter and just start reading start through the encyclopedia right, and right, just right, see right. kind of some kind of stuff. So they don't have to do all that because everything is at a fingertip right now. Yeah. And, 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 and the attention span for wanting to know that stuff has shortened. Yes. So... You know, everything's about now, 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 yeah. and what I can remember and what I saw. I ain't worried about what, what right. happened before. There's a me. small few of folks out there that's really trying to, to, to help these kids understand what happened before them. And I say that because um, my oldest son, um, he did he had to do a history uh, presentation this, this past week. And the history teacher had them to look up. He gave them 10, um, 10 oh. um, instances uh, within black history during the civil rights movement that uh, they wanted them to 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 do a PowerPoint on three three slides for each incident like the the Freedom Riders and the March on Washington and you know the Albany movement a lot of this stuff you know I, I helped them with it I was so happy that that teacher picked that project because not just for my son but also some of the white kids in the class to be able to understand what some of us had to go through just to get basic civil rights. Like they, they talked about one of the, one of the instances was the children's march, um, in, in Alabama. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, I was able to help my son and educate him on, you know, these kids were basically just marching just so they can get the same rights that white kids have to be able to go to a classroom, 
that's not, you know, it's not a whites only classroom or they drink water from a front that's not white on, whites only or go to a bus station and sit in the lobby with other white people. And, you know, for him to be able to see that these kids, elementary school age kids were beaten, taken to jail just so they can have basic rights. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I commend that teacher because, like I said, it was great to educate my son, but also educate the white kids in the class to see that if you can do this project and understand what these what we had to go through during that time and still in your within yourself still think it's not that big of a deal then you have more issues than what this teacher can try to help right. you with mm -hmm. but i just commend them for just doing that because he didn't have to do that you know what i'm right. saying you know we've all been through black right. history month in, in, the king in, right in our classes <laughs> and in and, and, and social studies and stuff like that it would last about a couple of weeks we would hear about Martin Luther King and the and the Stanford I have a folks. dream. That's it. it sums but up for them to be able to see the Children's March, be able to see you know the 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 bus boycotts in Alabama, and to see what they've gone through. Like I commend that teacher for doing that. Like I said, it educated my son, and I was even like I said even more um, um, satisfied with the fact that other white kids in his class were able to see that stuff too. So we 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 as a uh, as a as as the OGs have to like you said, we got to educate. You know the younger folks and try to help them understand what did come before them because if it wasn't before what came before them it would be no them and that's right. e that's even more you know e even with sports like you your son is playing baseball he has to know like yeah you don't see that many kids that look like you playing this sport but let me take you back to the 80s Right. Let me take you back to the nineties. I Rick, had to turn him on to Ricky Henderson not right. long ago. You seeing Ricky Seven, Henderson, you especially seeing, in the seventies. Right. You seen, you seen Barry Bonds. You seeing Rick? Like it was. You need to yeah. know this. And the same with my other son. He don't care about sports much, but he loves music. He loves movies. So I had to turn him on to, you know, he always said, Dad, listen to his old music. Sit down and listen to. You're going to be a music lover. You right. You want to write yeah. You want to write raps? Go listen to Andre 3000. Right. And really break down what he says. You know what I'm saying? Listen to all these other rappers that, 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 that you, you know, started before you were born. But if you want to write your own music and really put stuff together, you need to figure out how it was done before you. Right. Trey said, dup -da -dup -da -da. <laughs> My boy, my boy does his thing. He really tries his best to. Hey man, to, that's good. To, Foster that man. Yeah that's, man. That's, yeah. So, but yeah, it's on us to make sure we we keep the past alive and also show them, you know, who came before them. For sure. Because right. you, you have to know. For sure. Good conversation, fellas. Absolutely. That's what the lick reads for week ten. All right. All right, everybody, y'all know what time it is. It's time for What You Own. And in this segment, we're going to give y'all some classic albums to listen to, some stuff y'all can check out when you get get a minute. And um, slow, we're going we're gonna to let you go first since you're the oldest of the OGs. Uh, what you own this week, brother? All right. Take you back to 1989. 89? Woo! Finest one. I was 13. I yeah. was graduating high yeah, school, I was going on fourteen, and listening in the United States Army when this <laughs> album dropped in August of nineteen eighty nine. Matter of fact, I was in basic training when the album dropped. Well, you was for a brag. No, Jackson. Victory starts here, South Carolina. Fort Jackson, South Carolina. Oh man, ten to one. <laughs> what you, you through, got, dog? What you is went it? through Fort Jackson, and you ain't get none. You was get. You didn't get. <laughs> You didn't get no disease. <laughs> Passing right. around like Skittles out there. Anyway, Unfinished Business, EPMD second album. Okay. Woo. Okay. Drop. Eric, a lot of people sleep on EPMD, though. Eric EPMD compares. was... When you talk about the history and the greatest groups of all time, they don't get mentioned enough. No, they don't. Nah, they they don't they because, don't. you know what? They they got the Run DMC. They were still on the effects of Run DMC when it comes to duos. Yeah. And they didn't get... Re the first album... It was tough. was tough. Yeah. The unfair business was, they came back pretty strong. They came back strong. And they dropped the first single, so what you saying? And that that beat to this day still, you hear it. Doom, 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 doom. <laughs> and uh, uh, they introduced, you know, because they always good for introducing somebody. They introduced K-Solo on this mm -hmm. album. Yeah. With a hard song called Nick Knack Patty Wagon. They spit on that. Name. Yeah, they did. So Unfinished Business is my classic album for week 10. Yeah, that's EPMD is one of those groups where they they kind of like De La Soul, The Roots. They continuously put out good projects. Like right. they'll they'll ha they don't really ever fall off or make a dud. They just make consistent projects. Consistent, yeah. Like they'll put out a banger, classic album, 
they come out with something, they followed up with something that's good. Right. That's that's. Let me that's, tell you how old EPMD is. The first record I had the the vinyl. Wow. Of it. Yeah. Yeah. I bought. I got it and Big Daddy Kane uh, along with the Kane at the same time. Oh, that's that's how, that's how old that dude. Is. Man, you might I might have to steal that one from you. Old Daddy Kane. Yeah, EPMD, man. All right. Because the uh, first they always got business in the album. I always get them confused. Mm -hmm. The first one was. Was it strictly business? Strictly business, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, unfinished business. Okay, yeah. So, All right, cool. EPMD, Good that's stuff. what's up, Chuck. What you on this week, man? I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of you know biased to the south. I always try to pull out a you know a, a, a southern classic, and I got another one for us, um, cat that a lot of people don't know is originally out of St. Petersburg, Florida. Shout out to the bird, and then he ended up moving to Houston, Texas. But Devin the dude, the dude, 1998, the dude. And man, literally in 1998, I was living, trying to live exactly what he was talking about. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That was around the time I was like, man. That's T-Mobile days, right? No, yeah. prior to that, man. Really? It was, it was yeah, right I was there in 98. It was around the time I was like, man, well, I don't want to do this school shit no more. I just want to drink and holler, at these, the little, holler at these little chicks I can find. And man, there were so many songs, though, that just. For one, it's a comedy album. You know what I'm saying? It, it will tickle. It's you. very comedic. It will tickle right. you more than anything yeah. else. But like songs like "Mo for Me," where he's like, <laughs> "Parents, I'm not trying to tell your children to smoke. You see, because if they just say no, it'd be Mo, Mo for, for Me." me. <laughs> <laughs> that and bust one for you. And my favorite song is "Show You," which is basically it's it's one of the great one of, one of the best storytelling raps of all time where everybody all of us have been in that situation when your homeboy tells you hey man i got some hoes coming through mm. you need to come through and take one for me i'm gonna get the other one you got one there's two of them coming come hurry up and get here because they ready right and Devin got there and you they was the two big girls and, <laughs> <laughs> and the home my favorite line from the homeboy when his homeboy says hey man at least these hoes big and cute. <laughs> Not big and fucked up. You the fuck the skinny ugly asshole. So nigga, what's up? So man, it's 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 just a funny, funny album, man. Like I said, it takes me back to a time where I, I was literally trying to do the same thing. Just trying to oh, yeah. chill out, have fun, and trying to feed, see what females you that can get at, man. All about, man. Yeah. yeah, man. A lot of us time. a lot of us, our first introduction to Devin Adu was on Scarface's uh fuck, fuck faces. faces. Yes. Um, yeah. cause he's on the hook on that. Yeah, you oh, must be used to all the finer things. <laughs> Infatuated <laughs> by what money brings. Oh, man, I'm getting used to <laughs> but Yeah, man. Devin yeah. the Dude, 1998. If you ain't heard it yet, you need you sleeping on yourself, go check yeah, it out. Yeah, man. His first three pretty much was, they were straight. Um, his, the next album after that, um, Just Trying to Live, is mine. Oh, yeah. With that Lackville 79 on there yeah. where he told the, the car broke down. He told the girl, go steal him a car, car, car battery. <laughs> and it wasn't just all jokes and, and, right. and, and, and games playing. Like, he had a song called All Right where he basically talks about, you know, some of the crazy things that's going on in the world and going in his mind. But he thinks to himself, you know what? Everything's going to be all right. You right. Know, at the end of the day. So... You know, it's a little bit. It's a couple of lessons to be learned, but yeah, it's just yeah. good stuff. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Do. definitely, definitely one of my favorites. Check him out. Um, well, what I'm on this week is a true classic, true classic. This arguably is one of the best debut albums ever. From arguably, you could you could argue he's the top five rapper of all time. You, that's a big. You, you're making some big statements. Making now. big statements, but you right. could argue that. You, you could can, argue that. You could argue that. I'm gonna, you can't don't, argue top ten. I'm you, saying don't get like slow and say no, 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 no. Midnight Marauders was the greatest thing he ever did. <laughs> <laughs> then he had to retract. Top ten, definitely. Yes, he's in my top. He's 10. in the top three West Coast. If you want to go, um, yeah, it might be. The he's number. not, he, and he's, he's not three. He's not three. No. No. He may not even be two. What is it, bro? Tell the people what they wait. What they waiting for? Snoop Dogg, Doggy Style. Man, yeah. I was a senior mm -hmm. in high school. Nineteen ninety three. You also say one of the most anticipated, anticipated projects yeah. because probably the most anticipated. Yes. Yeah. Because it was number. It was number one day uh, week one. Yes. Yeah, probably that and maybe Fifty Cent's Get Rich or Die Trying. That was probably one of the most everybody was waiting, waiting for it, for it to it come to drop out. And, yeah. and and for it to drop and not disappoint. Right. Right. So for for me, doggy style, like you said, you was a senior, I was 
You had to be a sophomore. I was a sophomore, I was and a I grown remember ass man. grown ass man. <laughs> so you were, you really appreciate. Oh yes, <laughs> I was. I and one of the memories I have is I was in Mariana. My cousin saw that I had the tape. He's like, "Man, let me hold your tape." And my cousin was notorious for not giving shit back. I was like, "Look, man, I'm gonna need my tape back for sure. <laughs> I'm gonna need my tape back." That eight ninety nine goes a long way. A long, what year that came out? Ninety three. Ninety three. That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. I heard that album going to Tallahassee to see Florida State, and because Charlie was there, there, uh, and uh, and the partner put the tape in, and we. I was in the parking lot at Jefferson High School. With my homeboy Preston Beckham, he was the first person who played it for me. Shout out Primo, and uh, that was my first time hearing it in the parking lot. But right before football practice, I had to listen to it in the parking lot, at Jefferson High School. So we talk about the box, and this was the era of the box. Gin, yes. and, gin and juice was you big. Folks don't know nothing about the box. Box was a video service you could pay for <laughs> to have music videos played. Yeah. But gin and juice was big on the box. Yes. Oh. Who Huge. am I? Who, who am, am I? Was I? the first single, right? That dropped. Yeah. Who am What's I? What's my name? That's who am yeah, I? Yeah. 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 So that was big on the box, but the best song on the album, is, uh, uh, the best song, ain't no fun. Ain't ain't no fun. The homies came. Man, listen, hey, listen. Hey, Nate Dogg, first verse came through, yes. killed it. God rest the dead. Um, Daz came through, yes. second verse, killed it. Guess who's back, back in, in the, the motherfucking, motherfucking house? <laughs> Little fat. No, I'm not Daz. Corrupt. I'm sorry. Corrupt. That was yeah. corrupt. It was corrupt. It was. It was um, no. Nate, Corrupt, Snoop, Dan Warren G. But and you know one of my favorite songs is Doggy Dogs World. I that was going to say, Dogs that was my, because the video was so It's like everywhere dope. I look and everywhere I go. The video was so dope. It was. Right. It was. I'm going back to Ain't No Fun. Because when Corrupt came on and said, well, if Corrupt gave a fuck but about girl. a bitch, I'd always be <laughs> broke. broke. <laughs> I have no motherfucking end of the smoke. smoke. <laughs> I get sloped and loony. <laughs> Bitch, you can't do me. Do we look <laughs> like BBD? BBD? You fucking groupie. Man. <laughs> Woo. Yeah, man. It was it was so much <laughs> talent within that little circle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people don't know Daz did a lot of production. Yeah. On that album, he did a lot of production for The Chronic. Mm -hmm. Like, man, it was so much talent. And that was such a good time. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. it was such a good time. Like, so I, was a, I, would say I was a senior in high school. And that's right around the time when you start... You know, go on a low price, get you a little quote to drink. Yeah, yeah. Get ready to go to the party, you know what I'm saying? Get you a little MD to chase it down with, you know what I'm saying? Right. And it was just a good, just a good time. It was a great like time. Like they say, what a time to be alive. That was a good time to that be alive. That was a great time to be alive. That was a great time Because he was flying off the coat. The Chronic was one of the greatest of all greatest time. Greatest of all time. And then Snoop came right Came there. right back and kept it rolling. And kept it rolling. Man. Suge was on a, had an empire oh, at death. And like you said, dog, a lot of people don't. I mean, they don't talk about Snoop when they top five all the time, but I've, I've watched Snoop freestyle for five minutes straight. And go. And mm -hmm. go. And we're talking like 50-year-old Snoop. We're not, yeah. talk, we're not talking about like 20 He can still do it he today. He do it. Yeah. A lot of people don't give Snoop the credit he deserves. Think about it, man. Snoop went from a gangster to he's on TV with Martha Stewart. Right. Like, white people love him. Love him. Love him. Got <laughs> you all know what kind saying? of commercials. Make it Corona, and, make it corona commercials. Corona. Sitting skinny ass in a robe on a beach. With a handlebar mustache. <laughs> the pistachio <laughs> commercials. He, uh, he made weed smoking to like a casual thing. Nah, and I would never smoke weed. Never, ever. Never. You hear too many stories about people like, man, I smoke weed. Never smoke weed. And uh, he was like, I lost track of time. Mm -hmm. Like, man. I <laughs> then he was on the... Uh, because I know he he's invested in a company who did the Roy Jones Mike Tyson fight. Oh and man, his commentary. Oh man, that commentary <laughs> now they, was going now, about the whole fight. Now they want him to do it. Uh, you know, for regular for regular. regular fight? Yes. <laughs> Can you imagine that, Doug? Oh my God. This he cat was... went from being on trial for murder. murder. And murder was the case yeah, was that on, they gave him was on this album. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga's on what was it, the Source Awards or wherever he performed that? MTV oh, Awards. MTV when he, Awards. When he when he got about the, I'm the wheelchair. Yeah. Oh, I'm man. innocent. <laughs> that was pretty dope. Especially because yeah. he planned the line was when 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 he got about the wheelchair. You know what I'm saying? That was that was dope. That and was then dope. his famous thing that kind of ignited the East Coast West. Oh, y'all ain't got ain't no love for Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre. Ain't got no love for Snoop Dogg. For Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg. Let me know. Y'all ain't got no love for the West Coast. <laughs> that was crazy, man. We ain't got no love for y'all yet. Then you know they, what? Do, they did the video New York, New York, in New York, kicking kick it down, down the bus. <laughs> they wanted, they wanted smoke. 
I think about that source because that's also the, the the same source where Outcast, Outcast got this salt and pepper. I still don't yeah. like salt and pepper to this day for that. This my homeboys for that nonsense. Yeah, like they she wish they wish they could sell as many records as Outcast. So <laughs> anyway, but man, look, 13, 13 songs. That's one of the best debut albums. Yes, ever all time, and they ain't Easy. really ain't ain't really no debate. That's right. one. You know, I'm I'm quick to tell you this is the greatest thing I've ever heard in my life, or a great thing I've ever eaten right, in my life. Right. I'm comfortable in saying that was one of the greatest it is debuts one of, of all the greatest time. Yes. debuts of all yeah. time. Like I said, it was highly anticipated. Yeah, and you did know, did not disappoint. No, from, at all from beginning to end. Yeah, man. Because really, the Chronic really was his album too. Right. You know. He was on it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. But to just have him minus Dre. Right. And him just coming in and putting his partners on. Putting his it own. was dope. It, it was dope. dope. I never get, you know, the first time you heard Stu was on that deep cover. Right. Mm -hmm. Creep with me mm -hmm. as I crawled through the hood. <laughs> oh, man. They wanted that. Who was this guy? Yeah. But yeah, man. That's dope. it, though. Y'all get a chance, man. Check them albums out. Go get that. Go get, get all of those. For sure. All right. Y'all know what time it is. It's time for Who You Got. And this week, um, we're going to, in, in honor of college basketball and the tournament getting ramped, getting ready to get ramped up, we're going to go through, we're going to pick a couple of couple of things. Um, the first one we're going to give our opinion on is who is your favorite NCAA men's college basketball coach? Or maybe women's college. We won't, be, we, we won't keep it gender news. Who's your favorite college basketball coach? And then we're going to give our top three favorite NCAA title teams, basketball. It could be men or women. Um, and I'm going to start us off because last week these guys was around here stealing my players and stuff. <laughs> so to start us off, my favorite NCAA basketball coach of all time, and it's going to be a homer bias, is my man Leonard Hamilton. That's my coach. And I know he was at Oklahoma State first, and he came over to um, Miami. Miami. And that's when I started noticing him mm -hmm. because he, he there was two years he had the Miami teams rolling. Um, I forgot the guy, the one player he had that was drafted off that Miami team. And then he had those two good years with those Miami teams, and then he, like like a lot of them do, you do real good in college, you're going to get a shot at the pros. So he went to the Wizards. Didn't really pan out two years, and then he got he came back down and then joined my favorite school, Florida State, took over the men's basketball program. You know, he he did his thing. He slowly built that foundation over those years from like 2003, 2002, 2003. Slowly built that foundation up to where you have them as one of the new blood programs, as they like to call them, um, where FSU is now consistently, over the last four or five years, is consistently winning. It's basketball um, school. Basketball. It's, <laughs> yeah, it turned into basketball. Once we, crazy as that sounds. It's crazy as it sounds. Once we can – I envision them being like uh, – the early 2000s Florida Florida teams where the basketball team with Joe Kim Noah and all them boys on there right, yeah, won back-to-back -back national titles and the football team was, was going at it. Like I know at Florida, at UF, that had to be a peak time because you rolling out of football season and the basketball yeah. season and the party not yeah. stopping. And then the baseball team's pretty good too. Oh, yeah. Couldn't tell them Gator fans. Couldn't nothing. tell them nothing during that range. So I, 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 passed around all I over the I can't wait. I can't wait till – the football program get back and running. We can football oh, yeah. recruits can go to basketball games to see because they're doing that now. Like they seeing exciting basketball right. games. So Leonard Hamilton is is my favorite basketball coach of all time. Slow, who you got? That's good. I'm gonna go with my man with the towel over his shoulder. Oh, Tart. No, uh, John Thompson. Oh, uh, okay, all right, all right. John just he so, just put it over the shoulder. Tark was Tark sucking was on the yeah, Tark, yeah, Tark. <laughs> Tark was biting on the top. John Thompson. And the reason why as a kid in the eighties, um Georgetown was the joint. Yeah. And uh, he only won one, but they were sweet sixteens, final fours, in the championship game for a bunch of times. Uh, you know, Jordan took one from him in eighty two. Yeah. Uh, then uh, Ray Allen took one from him. Yeah, so the, you know, he you know he coached a bunch of great guys came through that program, and I remember as a kid, I thought Georgetown was a HBCU because yeah. the whole basketball team was black. Was us, 
until I got older to learn about oh, Georgetown, Georgetown University. Yeah. Really a prestigious like, university. Yeah, yeah. All, all the black people in there play football. They, they, play they play basketball. But I respect him because he made those guys get them books, and he turned a lot of them into good, great men, man. Right. Um, Patrick Ewan, Matombo, Lonzo Morning, AI. Uh, AI. You know, the list goes on. He put a bunch of them in the pros. And uh, that's from, and what I like about John Thompson, he didn't take no shit from nobody. Yeah, he spoke man. his mind, and he stood for what he stood for. Yeah, and even, even as a color color commentator, analyst for, I think he did. He did pro games, too. Yeah. Um, I, You know, he, he did a good job there, too. So he definitely uh, when it comes to black coaches, um, during an era where you know you didn't really see too many of them, especially in the college ranks, right? He stood out and did the job. He's on well. the Mount Rushmore. He's on the Mount, on the Mount, Mount Rushmore. Mount Rushmore. Yeah. And for all you youngsters, John Thompson was the first coach to allow the Nike swoosh on their uniforms. Did not know that. Meaning, and he started he, because he was he was like a, a board of director for Nike. I think up until he died. You oh, know. Okay. Um. But he started, they, they had their own Nikes and everything. Right. He, he set the tone. And matter of fact, uh, when I watched, uh, if you'll watch Rick Wing for the Big East, uh, 30 for 30, mm -hmm. he tells you how all those schools, Syracuse and everybody went to Nike from him. That's all right. That's, I ain't a bad pick there, brother. So I'm going to bring up the rear. Bring up the rear. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to change things up a little bit on y'all because uh, – you know, during my my short stint living in Tennessee, <clears throat> you know what I'm saying, I was able to to really understand just exactly what this person did and how much of an impact it had. <clears throat> mm. My favorite college coach of all time is Pat Summit. Let me just run down real quick what Pat Summit did at Tennessee, bro. <coughs> Her overall coaching record. Now this this includes a, a four year stint she had at Tennessee Martin, but. For the most part, she was at Tennessee for, I think, from 74 to 2012. Her record was 1,098 wins to 208 losses. Wow. An 841 winning percentage. They won a chip eight times. She got to the Final Four 18 times. She won the SEC tournament 16 times. As well as the regular season, sixteen times. Pat did her thing at Tennessee. Yes. Pat did her thing at Tennessee. She did her thing for women's <clears throat> for women's basketball. Yes. Pat was the truth. I know a lot of people. You know, when you think about college basketball, you think of, right now you think about UConn. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Obviously, they won a lot of shit. But I think that the landscape changed once UConn started taking over because that's when you know basically he can snap his fingers, get any recruit he wants. Yeah, Gino so. had a machine. Yeah, right. When, when she got sick and. Had to step down yeah. from coaching. Yeah, that's when, because because UConn was damn good. Because that was a, a real rivalry, Tennessee right. yes. UConn. Yes, um, I think the difference was for me was that Pat built it from the ground up. Right, you know what I'm saying. Not saying that Gino did not, but I think that like I said, the landscape changed when Tennessee got good, and you know Gino was able to get whatever recruit he wanted. Pat wasn't, you know, she wasn't getting the top recruits in the beginning. Right, you know what I'm saying, and she was able to win despite that. And like I said, to, bro, to win a thousand and ninety-eight games out of, game. out, out of thirteen hundred, you think about it, you win eleven hundred games out of thirteen hundred. Like that's ridiculous, bro. Like Pat just she 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 did her thing at Tennessee. God bless the dead. She's no longer with us. I wish we can give her some flowers. You know what I'm saying? But you know, she also, you know, she won Coach of the Year five times. Right. If if you had to do a Mount Rushmore of just College basketball coaches, she has she to has be on, to be she on, has on there. there with whatever men you want to put whatever, her up there whatever, with. Whatever, yeah. whatever other three men you want to put on there, she's got to be there. Pat Summit, um, your boy from UCLA, um, John, John Wooden, John Wooden, Maybe Pat Mike Shishovsky, Mike Shishovsky, got to give him his due. Who? Dean, Dean Smith's Smith. got to be on Smith. there. I mean, you want to make five, John Thompson? Yeah, but Gino gonna say I got eleven. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's. Gino got two recruiting classes that did not lose a game. 
That's absurd, bro. Like, think about that. <laughs> Two recruiting classes. That's just crazy. They did not lose a game. And, Much respect. And to all you. of them, they got eight rank. All, all every year they got a ring. Much Four respect, years. to Gino. I take nothing away from Gino, but no. I'm just thinking about just the impact right. that Pat it, had. Pat was a from beast. 1974 until she wasn't was no longer able to do it. She held it down for a she year, held long it down. time. Yep. I knew a, a guy that played football up there, mm. and they told me <laughs> it was crazy. When the girls came for recruiting visits, she wanted them to make sure the girls had a great time. But once they got there on their team, do not touch these girls. I believe it. Because she didn't want them to come up pregnant and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. they, them girls were, And they practiced against dudes. Yeah. They had yeah. A, a squad that she had. Yeah. Specifically for them to just right. practice against and them. And they was that good. So, shout out to Pat Summit, man. That's my, right. that's, that's my coach all the okay, time. Hey, man, Great coach. Yeah, yeah, three good picks. I ain't, I ain't yes. bad at it. Yeah. All right, so we're going to get into now <clears throat> your top three men's basketball title. Not even men's. Your top three NCAA basketball title teams. Who are your, who are your favorites? It ain't got to be necessarily the best of all time. Mm -hmm. But who are your three favorite teams? And I'm going to start us off so y'all don't steal my picks again. <laughs> Starting us off, I'm I'm going with um this is kind of when I really started watching basketball. Like I would come home from church on Sundays and I would watch the NBA or I would watch whatever mm. college game was on. On Saturday I watched college games. I was into basketball myself. That was I, you know, I was good at football. I was okay at basketball, but basketball I was I really enjoyed watching, coaching, and playing. Right. So for me, my first team is the nineteen ninety three, ninety four Arkansas Razorbacks. Damn you. Good team. <laughs> team. Nolan yeah. Richardson. Um, That's another coach that ain't give a damn. Ain't give a damn. <laughs> I'm about tall, dark skinned black man just like Nolan. Nolan's like, still like bitter, right? Probably, oh, Nolan ain't, just he, mad all the damn man, time. Nolan probably ain't played. Right. Uh, mad all the damn time. All the time. They had a great wing in Scotty Thurman, but the player that drove that engine on that team was my man, Corliss Williams. Williamson. The Probably one of the best nicknames in sports, Big Nasty, yeah. Yeah, of all time. They don't get much better than that. They don't get much better than that. Big Boy played for them, too. They, uh, played at Phoenix. Um, was the Oliver Miller. Oliver Miller. Did he play at Arkansas? Did he play at Arkansas? I don't remember. I don't, I don't remember where I thought he was on that team, too. I might be wrong. Um. So, yeah, that's that's my first team. And I, I, that was one I really enjoyed. I think they beat Duke for the title that year, so I really – Yes, really that it made it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my number two team is the 99 to 2000 Michigan State Spartans, coached by Tom Izzo, led by Mateen Cleaves and Mo P. Morris mm -hmm. Pearson. And that team also had a young Jason Richardson, was a freshman. They did. That went on to the NBA and had him a, a successful yeah, anchor. Okay, all right. Um, so that's my number two team. My number three team. Homer pick, but I'm going to go with it as one of our SVM producers over here. My boy Clark can attest. The 2019 2020 Florida State Seminoles. That team last year, even though they did not win a title, they won the ACC title. So you're going to claim the title? I'm going to claim the like, title. Like UCF yeah. football team? Yep, I'm going to claim it. Because if you watch that team like I watched that team, we were rock. Like I really, they had a real. Leonard Hamilton. This this possibly as of date was his best team he's had. Yes, you had three of the top players on the team got drafted. Patrick Williams went first to the Bulls. Devin Vassell went to. Did he go to the to the um, Spurs? Thinking with the Spurs mm. and Trent Forrest, the point guard, the senior point guard, ended up going to Utah. And a lot of those players that they're still on the team this year and they're doing pretty good. Yeah. But that team, I I was disappointed due to the pandemic that we didn't get a chance to right. see what they were going to do. Cause I, I, right I, at the cusp. I had the cusp. The, it was the ACC tournament had just started, and they shut the tournament. Right. So they stopped yeah. the tournament. Yeah. They were the ACC regular season champions. So they were going into the ACC tournament with the number one seed. And all they basically had to do was just – they were in, they were gonna make it anyway, but to lock up a top seed in 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 for the tournament that year, they just had to go make a good run in the ACC tournament. And they would got a number one seed, right? But that team was every time they played, I was on them. Yeah. So that's that's my my three teams. Hmm. Slow, who you got? All right, we're gonna start off with the 1990 UNLV running Rebels. Just taking all yeah. of my boy LJ. 
Stacy Oz. Stacy Allman, oh, Plastic Man. You wanted them to win. Anderson Hunt. Just for black civil rights. Greg Anthony. <laughs> Greg Anthony. You can't forget Greg Anthony running no. the show. That's why I know. I mean, I don't know. I shouldn't say no. But in 1991, when they lost to Duke, Devastated. they were even better in 91. Devastated. <laughs> it was fixed. <laughs> or they just had that dog on the team of Christian Layton. Huh? Yeah, they did. But, man, UNLV had just destroyed these dudes the year before. And remember the next year, they called it the UNLV Invitational. Yeah. <laughs> they went 30 and 0. I mean, destroyed people. And lost in that final four game to Duke. I was like. Devastated. I couldn't believe it. Fixed. <laughs> i never forget it. Second team. 2003 Syracuse Orangemen. Or. I <laughs> got you. <laughs> I love Melo, dog. Yes. Freshman Melo. Melo. You walk in as a freshman and win a title? Win a title. They had the, uh, the goal. I forgot his name. Um. White boy could shoot. It didn't matter. Melo carried the yeah, team. Yeah, Melo carried the team. And then my last team is the 2009 UNC Tar Heels with Psycho T and them boys. When uh, Forte on that squad? No, Forte. That was before him. Before Forte, okay. Now, Forte was on the team that they should have won okay. with uh, uh, Vince them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, the 2009 UNC Tar Heels. 2003 Syracuse Orange. Well, it's just called the Orange now. Let's be politically correct. They're not the Orange men anymore. <laughs> and the 1990 UNLV Running Rebels. All right, that ain't bad. Man. Pretty good. Pretty bad. good. I mean, uh, that, that was the UNLV 1990 was one of my picks. Um, so I, I'm sorry. I just not gonna pick somebody else. I love that team so much. <laughs> I got some teams that you can pick from. No, no, I'm good. Let's I'm see good. who we go with first. <laughs> my second team, because I am gonna keep UNLV as my first team. So I just just because I love that team, and I was indeed devastated when they lost to Duke the following '91. But my second team is the 1993 uh, North Carolina Tar Heels mm. uh, when they won that chip, specifically because um, um, I forget the Jets' name. Um, he was, a, he was a, a forward for the team. I forget his name. I can't think of his name to save my life. Lynch. Yes, Lynch. My, Lynch. His father used to work at McDill with my mom. Oh wow. Right, so that's why that's another reason why I kind of followed them even closer. I was I was already, I'd already been a Tar Heel fan for basketball anyway, but when it come to find out that his father worked at the uh, at McDill with my mom uh, at the BX, I was like, oh, okay, cool. So, but that's had a decent career in the pros. That, yeah, yeah, he did. Was that uh, Eric Montrose was on that team? Yes, yep, Montrose was on that team. Um, I forget the guard uh, Randolph uh, was on that team. Yeah. Uh, they, they had a, they had a, they had a stick, so so they did their thing. So that's my second team. Uh, my third team, just for just to, uh, uh, I got an uncle of mine that's a diehard, diehard Kentucky fan. Mm. Um, so I got to show him some love I know uh, for one of the teams that I thought that was a was a, a underdog. I didn't think anybody thought that Tubby was going to be able to take this team to the chip. Mm. But in 1998, Kentucky uh, Wildcats yeah. winning it all. Went thirty five and four that year. I feel like they was an underdog because I think you know, Tubby coming in, they didn't really think Tubby was gonna be right. able to carry mm -hmm. the torch the way, you know. Cause when he they came right after Patino, right after Patino, mm -hmm. I think Tubby did a good coming, job. coming from Minnesota. Exactly. Yeah. Nobody was expecting that Tubby carried that. They still don't get Tubby enough chip. credit. They, they don't. don't. They don't. He, he Tubby had a dog though. Yeah, he did. He had a dog. He did. He had. He, he had Antoine. Yeah, he did. And Antoine James and Antoine was. Yeah, didn't he have well, Antoine, Antoine Walker? Was no, Antoine was, that was in North a, Carolina. You, oh, okay, you think, Antoine Walker, right? Antoine Walker. Walker. Who else was on that team? It was who was a guard Antoine on that team? Antoine Walker. Um, who was a guard on the team? Anderson. Light -skin. Anderson. Light -skin. Light -skin. His first name. Yeah. Uh, uh, I forget his first name. But a light skinned dude. Yes. Shooting, shooting the rock guy. And see, I know that, and he also had Ron Mercer on Kenyan? that squad. Right. Yeah, Ron Mercer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I know that because my cousin used to date Ron Mercer when she went to Kentucky. Okay. Uh, Ron Mercer wasn't. He wasn't about shit when he was at Kentucky. <laughs> Later on in life, she told me that he kind of turned things around. And he was a better dude, and he was trying to get back in good with it. But I don't think she gave he too didn't much have a decent. He didn't have a good pro career. He had a decent one. He was yeah. in Indiana for a while. He yeah. played for your yeah. yeah. for a little while. Yeah. He had a decent career. Yeah. 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 Ron Mercer was, like I said, I didn't care for him because he did my cousin dirty while she was at Kentucky. <laughs> Later on in life, he became a pretty decent dude, so I, I gave him a pass. But, yeah. 
Tubby had a, had a hell of a squad and uh, Tubby uh, recruited. Remember Desmond? God bless the dead. Yes, God mm-hmm. bless Desmond. Yes. Desmond Desmond was the Desmond had everything. All the talent in the world, man. Football, basketball, all the talent in the world. He was at Kentucky. And and like I said, my cousin was at Kentucky at the same time. She was there, I think, for six years. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> um, she told me like they could they could get away with almost murder at Kentucky. Right. The basketball team was. Um, but there was only so much that they could, you know, not allow you to do. And I think that's what kind of what got, got but Desmond dead. had that, they had that, because remember one of them kids got killed in a, uh, a car accident or something. Car accident, yeah. drinking, and they had a zero tolerance yeah. for I drinking. I think that's what got, and that's got when Desmond, Desmond in trouble. Yeah, yeah but uh, that, was, that was my my last team, Kentucky, Tubby Smith. Hell of a squad. So yeah. Kentucky, Carolina, and UNLV is my team. Okay. I know you said you had a couple. You probably didn't. But I give an honorable mention to, I want to say the 2002 or two, no, 2003 UConn team. Mm. Mm-hmm. A team with Kevin Ollie. Right. Uh, uh, another underdog. They weren't expecting to do anything right. with. Uh, what, was, what was the fat point guard? The most, uh, uh, no, the Alamine. Alamine. Yeah. Alamine, yeah. yeah. I, that team, yeah, that they had that some dogs good. on that team too, man. Sure. So that was one of my favorite teams too because they beat Duke. My <laughs> honorable mention is, and this is way before y'all time, but I was a young man. 1983 NC State Wolfpack, Jimmy Valvano, what they went through and to won, get to, the to get to that, and then to who they beat. They beat Houston, the Five Slammer Jammer. Yeah. They they had a stick. still crazy that they didn't win. Yes, <laughs> yeah. you think about who was yeah. on that team. They were that team. They was stupid. They got Clyde they, and Hakeem. They couldn't get it together. And they, they had uh, Ralph Sampson. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you got two of the top fifty players of the NBA and ever. It ever made no sense for them not to win. <laughs> Why weren't you guys just running the show? Because we can't name a player on NC State team that they, that helped beat them. No, at all. I couldn't. Uh, all the only I know one I know was. Uh, Sydney Lowe because he was end up being the coach. That's how. I, <laughs> but you know, but that's why. What the beauty of the NCAA tournament is not what you are, what you've done, what you're doing tonight. Right. Because there is no tomorrow. You gotta yeah. get, you There's gotta, no series. You gotta get to tonight. <laughs> and they were the best team that night. Oh yeah. You know. That's all that matters. Yeah. Whoever can win them. Five or six games. Five or six games. Yeah. Look at look at look at them great. Michigan five, uh, Fab Five teams. Oh, man. I'm still mad. Couldn't they do couldn't it. pull it off. They couldn't do it. As good as they were. As close as they got. As great just, as they were. Oh, Just couldn't do it. That's what's up, man. <laughs> yeah, man. And, and that's why I kind of like, you know, I, 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 I college basketball, man, when it gets around conference tournament time. It's good time. It's yes. good time. Yeah. Because you start hearing about the stories and you start watching these teams right. and mm-hmm. seeing who's going to come up and who the underdogs are. The Cinderella. Are. Right. And you yeah. start watching these, you know, schools from these HBCUs or these small schools from right. the smaller conferences. They just show up. Just, just show, show up. up mm-hmm. And you be like, damn, like, think about this. Who knew Davidson and a Steph Curry exactly. was going to run the table? Who was this? This oh this this Seth Curry this I got what even better who would have thought a few years ago that Florida Gulf Coast Ghost, Ghost. would have made it to the Sweet Sixteen right. run in it they went to <laughs> Final Four right oh, yeah they went to the Final Four they went to the Final Four they went to the Final Four and look at Gonzaga Gonzaga to this day is like a powerhouse now because but they choke every time but hold on no but that's like Gonzaga is like the Bills yeah of, of they they're consistently good but, every year but can't get over the hump can't get over the but hump. they play. Nobody. Yeah, in the that's season. their problem. They have no. They, they, they're not. They're not tested during the season. They yeah. whoop everybody. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they, they whoop do. everybody. That's yeah. what I, I say, man. Look, I th- and it's for me. It feels good because you usually we'll have a combine and then free agency. Right. Fo- you know, free agency starts and football, and then you just start. Normally, it'll start right, in the end of March, right, but right. And then they, the tournament hits you, and then once soon as the tournament done, if you're in the NBA, playoffs heating up, so you just get. Like basketball up, and then by the time you end with, end with basketball, you to, if you're into hockey, yeah. us being here in Tampa watching the Lightning, because I watch the, I watch, keep track of the Lightning. It's fun to watch. They say it's the greatest sport. You one of the best sports you can see live. It's right. exciting, man. Yeah, I love to see it live. I can't, yeah. I won't watch it on TV, but I can I've been to plenty of hockey games. Yeah. Right. Then you know, once that and being somewhere where hockey is is big, you got that. And yeah, you got baseball kind of going. Next thing you know, it's August. Football starting right back up. Right. Yeah, man. Right. So the NCAA tournament is, uh, you know, because it's just like a, 
event when the tournament starts in, in the middle of the day, you finding a TV or some kind of, not right. where we have computers and everything, you pull up a feed and watch the tournament, you know. Seeing if that sixteen can knock off that one, you know, <laughs> whatever for, whatever uh, bracket you don't submit right. for the contest, the money you don't put down on the game. And I, I, I just refuse to do them things anymore because, like, come on, man, I ain't gonna. Nah, do I do them. I do them for fun, man. Yeah, you do it for the fun. But uh, it, it's definitely one. It's definitely one of the be best betters holidays around, man. Oh yeah, yes. They picking it going, but that but that's good though, man. Some good picks, some good teams, man. Oh yeah, that's gonna do it for what you want. I mean, oh. for who you got. I'm sorry, that's gonna do it for who you got. All right, so we're going to jump right into who's that lady for this week. Who's that lady? Uh, week 10, I decided to go back to tennis uh, for who's that lady, and we want to honor the great Althea Gibson. All right, Queen Althea, as I'm going to call her, was born on August 25th, 1927, in a small town of Silver, South Carolina. Wow. Never even heard of her. Never. Uh, she probably not even exist anymore. Probably not. <laughs> uh, she was born to two sharecroppers uh, on a cotton farm. Uh, at that time, uh, around that time, you know, things were getting rough for folks in the South. So her family moved to Harlem, New York, which I learned a lot of people from South Carolina mm -hmm. that migrated into New York. As a matter of fact, Chris Rock's family did that mm -hmm. at one point in time. Uh, but uh, she, uh, when she got to New York, she's when she started to get into tennis. She uh, actually worked under the Power League, uh, which we know a little bit about here in Tampa. She became uh, proficient in paddle tennis, as they used to call it back in that day, and she, at the age of 12, she was New York City women's paddle tennis champion. At 13, she decided she decided to quit school, and she used some of her skills. Actually, she was she used some boxing skills that her father taught her, so she could engage in uh, some different uh, avenues throughout her life before she focused on tennis uh, altogether. Uh, but she became a professional tennis player as well as a professional golfer, which I did not know. Um, she became the first African-American woman to win a Grand Slam title in 1956 with the French Open. She followed that year by winning both Wimbledon and the U.S. Nationals. And then she won both again in 1958 and was voted the Female Athlete of the Year. Uh, she has won 11 Grand Slam tournaments, five single titles, five doubles titles, and one mixed doubles title as well. She was inducted into the International Tennis Hall of Fame and the International Women's Sports Hall of Fame. And she was uh, noted as one of the greatest uh, players who ever lived. And uh, the person who actually said that was a gentleman by the name of Bob Ryland, who was the former coach of both Venus and Serena Williams. Uh, so that says a lot right there within itself. So from the OG Sports Show, we'd like to send a shout out and much love to Althea Gibson's family. Um, she's no longer with us, unfortunately. She passed uh, not too long ago, actually in 2003, I believe. So. She's no longer with us, but we still want to show us, uh, show her uh, as much love as we possibly can from the OG Sports Show. Shout out to her and her family. Salute. And we understand that she paved the way for Without her, we would not see Venus, Serena, or any of the other girls out right. playing. Uh, 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 Nail male soccer. Exactly. She would not be, we wouldn't be seeing none of them without Athea Gibson. She paved the way for us. So that's going to wrap it up, fellas, for week 10. All right. Another good show uh, in the books, fellas. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate everybody joining us once again. If you're a returner, if you're brand new, we love you. We appreciate you. Make sure you stay tuned. We'll be back again in not too long. Uh, again, signing off from SBM Studios in South Tampa. Subscribe and, wa uh, and watch the other shows in the family. Please do. SVM. Please do. Show us some love. We appreciate y'all. OG signing off. Peace out. Love y'all. Okay.